If you remember earlier, we looked at the question approach, and then we tried to convert the marks into minutes. We prepared a blank, started off a blank CSFB, and we thought about the associate valuation very carefully. What I'm going to move on to with, with, next, uh, with you next is the group structure and the investment check. Now, here's the group structure. If you remember, we had a parent with 116 divided by 145, or 80% of an interest in a subsidiary. And, of course, if you have 80% in a subsidiary, the NCIs, the non-controlling interest, must have the other 20%. And it happened, of course, two years before the CSFB date. As far as the associate is concerned, if you remember, it was 30%. And, of course, whenever you're doing an associate, you must never, never, ever introduce an NCI. Because, in a sense, if you have 30% of my company, you are the NCI. What you must ne never do is to claim that it is a bit like a subsidiary... And so you have 30% and therefore 70% as the NCI. The examiner is very keen that students don't do that and you will be marked down if you do that. It's, it's seen as a conceptual misunderstanding. So because it's in the middle of the year, the acquisition, six months is pre-acquisition and six months is post-acquisition. Let me just prove that to you. I brought through the pacemaker, Cyclop and Vardin. As soon as you decide that the Vardin is an associate, what I'd recommend you do is a little line, you see, like that. And so you can say this is the parent, this is the 80% sub, and of course this is your 30% associate. Uh, remember, where you're doing uh, CSFP, Consolidated Statement of Financial Position, you never take six months of it. Because a, a CSFP, the balance sheet, as it's sometimes called, is a financial snapshot of photographs. So I'm standing over the end of the year date with my mobile phone or, indeed, a camera, and I'm taking a snapshot at that point in time. So whether you acquired the associate in the middle of the year, at the start of the year, or well, many years ago, whatever the situation is at the year end, that's what's captured on camera uh, as at that date. But if you're doing a consolidated income statement, obviously if it's six months through the year, you only take the second six months. So you must not confuse a CSFB, which is a balance sheet, with a CIS, sometimes called a profit and loss account. Do be careful. So there you are. A few ideas there. The question continued. The $1 shares. All is worth underlining. And of course, because this is the Vardin, the associate, and this is the subsidiary and this is the parent, you can clearly see that the retained earnings, etc., are crucial, very, very important indeed. But this is at the balance sheet date, SFB date, which in this particular question, of course, is the 31st of March 2011. What else do we have in this question? Uh, I've shown you there the number of shares acquired, etc., which you are no doubt familiar with. Though please have a look at the screen and um, see if you can just revise for yourself the various bits and pieces of information there. Quite interesting as well is noting that you paid cash to me, let's say I'm the subsidiary, of 210 and then issued at par one 10% $100 loan note for every 200 shares acquired. That's quite important. Very, very important indeed. Though easy. One thing I noticed about Steve Scott, I've obviously taught other examining uh, bodies different, under different examiners over the years, uh, but I think Steve Scott is one of those exceptional uh, examiners where he, s he sets out 
to not confuse or trick students. He's extremely honest, and I have the highest regard for him. His questions, I can't say his questions are very easy, quite easy. If you're well prepared, they are very easy, of course. But he never tricks you by holding back a little bit of information and you guess at it. Nothing like that. He's absolutely honest. He's as straight as a, uh, you know, I don't know what, but he's extremely fair. And if he has made a mistake, which is very, very rare indeed, he'll apologize immediately and take that into account in the marking. So you never fear Steve Scott as, a, as an examiner, as a human being. He's extremely fair, and his, he's extremely keen, him and his team of markers, to get you through your exam. So it's actually, um, it's very, I feel very secure when I see his papers, because um, I always feel that whatever he wants you to do is there in, in, the, pa- in the exam paper, and there are no tricks or bad wording or anything like that extremely honest and reliable type of examiner. And as you know, one of the longest serving in the history of ACCA uh, in terms of numbers of years as examiner. And he wouldn't have survived unless he's been very successful. All right, so there you are. Investment in Vardin, you can see that. It says there, you took away 30 million of my shares and gave me 75 million of your shares. So clearly, if you give me 60, 75 million of your shares, and each of these shares is worth $1.60, you've got to be careful when you multiply all that out in due course. So that's your step four. The group structure and the investment check. So you can see there in P's books, if I were to just go back and show you the investment at cost, in P's books, parents' books, investment stands at 345. Do you agree some of that 345 must be an investment in Cyclop and some of the shares must be an investment in Vardin? So simple. And that's basically where I'm going to take you next. Here we are, 345. That's from the question. The cash, if you remember, was 210. Now, the loan notes, do be careful of this. Because you bought 116,000 shares, 116 million actually, uh, let's be careful with the zeros, you divide each of them by 200, and whatever the result is, you multiply by 100, and those are the loan notes. See? Those are the loan notes. And so you can see that 268 is the investment in S, that's built into the 345. Part of the challenge of this question is that the 345 isn't only you, the parents, investment, and me, the subsidiary, plus associate. It's not just subsidiary plus associate. There's also an external investment. Now, that's quite a clever point. So the loan note must be included in the investment at cost as it is part of the purchase consideration. And, of course, as far as V is concerned, you can see there in, uh, in the last line of point two, V was not yet recorded. So let me summarize step four for you. Always check the date of acquisition. If it's during the current year, do a time apportionment. If you remember, the associate was acquired in the middle of the year. Let's say that's a start and that's the end of my year. In the middle of the year... And so the reserves at date of acquisition becomes a minor challenge. Don't assume that the par value is always $1. Watch out for things like 50 cents and 25 cents, etc. This could affect the number of shares and, of course, the percentage held. So if you assume it's a $1 situation, but the question says it's a 50 cent um, scenario for this question, obviously you could be way off the mark and you could be treating an associate as a subsidiary or vice versa and that would be a, a tragic mistake. So always when you're reading your, the equity share capital, ordinary share capital in the question, as we did earlier, underline the $1. And if it's 50 cents, it'll show up in your mind and you say, oh gosh, you better be careful of this because of course if it's 50 cents, there are twice as many, twice as many shares. And so if you buy a certain number of shares and you divide by twice as many, the percentage, of course, is halved. So you may be dealing with an associate rather than a subsidiary. So do be careful of that. And, of course, always check for external investments. 
So that's your step four.